Hey, y'all, welcome back to Right at the Wire. We're going to look at the Santa Anita Derby, and uh, it's a really interesting field, including a Japanese import, so let's see what we got. The Santa Anita Derby is a grade one derby prep run at a mile and an eighth for three-year-olds. If we look at the field, number one is I don't get it. Uh, and uh, there's a part of me that said that uh, echoes that sentiment <laughs> about this one. Uh, he's trained by Doug O'Neill, and he's got his A rider Mario Gutierrez on him, and he's owned by Redham Racing, which is first class California outfit. Um, so the connections are good. Doug O'Neill is particularly dangerous in, in uh, spots where he is not the favorite in these type of races. So we always want to keep that in mind. If you look at this one, his last win was uh, his last maiden win was was a good, nice effort. He he looked very professional, looked uh, looked like a pretty good horse, and he got an eighty seven buyer for it. Um, I don't know how much he beat. Yellow Brick has been sort of a uh, lingering in the maiden ranks for quite some time, and we'll get to uh, dazzle me silver in a second. Um, but he, um, he, he, you know, he he looks like he might be have another move forward in him. And that would maybe put him underneath in the exotics. I don't see him as a win candidate, uh, but I think you might get some decent value on him. And of the uh, horses, you might qualify as field fillers here. He's certainly the best one. So um, I would uh, I would think about get, keeping him underneath just for the value that you might get. Dazzle Silver is a uh, horse with a big stride. And uh, looking at him, he looks like he still has some growing to do. I know this horse definitely wants two turns. Uh, he's by Tapper. That's no surprise. But uh, I think he's, uh, he's a little green and uh, physically immature to, to be in this race. And uh, he's got Kent DeSormo on him, Hall of Famer, and his brother trains him. And we know that Keith DeSormo can be very dangerous on stakes days. But uh, I don't think this is one that's a good factor here. He, it probably could do... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, he'll, he'll do with, uh, the name escapes me of a, a single ruler, <clears throat> excuse me, what he did in the, uh, in the Risen Star, we came from the clouds and just, uh, you know, came flying up to try to uh, get a piece, but, uh, that's about the extent of it. And I don't even think this one is good enough to do that. And, uh, the fact that he's still a maiden sort of is the exclamation point on throwing this one out. Go Rocket Ride is kind of the now horse. You know, everybody's uh, loving this one, and they should. Uh, got a 96 buyer, his first effort around two turns and only a second start. Showed a lot of precocity, and uh, this one definitely has some talent. He's got the right trainer, Dick Mandela, to uh, to shepherd him along, and he's got Flavian Pratt in the irons. I mean, he couldn't ask for much more than that. Uh, with another move forward, which I anticipate will be highly likely here, uh, this one is a win candidate, and he's an absolute use. Um, there is early pace signed on for this race, but nobody, I think, is going to set it lightning fast uh, where it's unreasonable, where it might bring this one out. Um, I think he's going to get to where he needs to in this field. I don't think that's going to be a problem. And if he's good enough, he could definitely win. One of Vermillion uh, hit the gate in the uh, Sunland Derby, that wonderful race we, uh, <laughs> we had to watch. And, uh, you know, he was uh, actually hit his head. And uh, I can't believe they didn't scratch him, but I guess because of the purse, they, they just said, like, give, gave him a chance to run. He was no factor in the race whatsoever. If we go back and look at his uh, times when he's right, uh, we'll see a horse that's moderately improving. And in the Allison Derby, he, uh, he did wire the field, and I uh, did it uh, with, with a little bit of grit. So uh, that's nice to see, but uh, he's no factor in this race. He's just not fast enough. And even if he takes another move forward, uh, I don't see him as a contender here. He would likely be a pace factor at best. Uh, I couldn't see much more than that. So I wouldn't include him on my tickets. I think he's a field filler. Now we come to the likely favorite practical move. Uh, the, the interesting that uh, Timmy Octin has trained this one throughout. Uh, he's been getting a lot of heat for his uh, record with the Bob Baffert transferees, but uh, he's had this one all along, and he's doing the best. So good for him. Uh, the San Felipe was a, was a nice effort. The thing that kind of bothers me about the San Felipe is that he got a pretty candy ride. He got an easy trip. Uh, he raided behind a moderate pace, got to the lead on the rail, saved all the ground, and coasted home. So I don't know how much testing there was in that race. But it was impressive nonetheless. I still do have some questions about this one around two turns at, at a mile and an eighth or greater. 
uh, because of his sire. So this is going to answer a lot of questions for me. If he looks really comfortable um, coming down the stretch in uh, in this one, then uh, I think that he is a bona fide derby contender. So we're just going to have to see. But all systems are go, and this one is definitely one to keep on your tickets, and he's a must-use and a win candidate for sure. Uh, National Treasure, we know his training has been interrupted. Uh, he had a gash in the back of his leg, and he had to scratch out of the San Felipe. And that's indicative, uh, if you look at his uh, by his work tab, uh, you see in uh, March and, uh, the, and last week, they're just uh, trying to cram a lot of training into him. They're running six furlongs. He's run uh, six furlongs three times uh, of his last four works, and I think they're trying to catch him up a little bit. I think this one has the talent. Uh, two turns is, is absolutely what this one wants. And he's got Johnny V aboard him. And uh, he, granted, the sham was a bit of a disappointment. But that was just such a funky race because they were all bad for trainees. Who knows what was going on? It was kind of a paid workout. So I'm not going to hold that too much against him. But this is put up or shut up for him. And he either, you know, uh, wins the race or he's going to have to get in line with all the other 40 uh, pointers. Uh, it's that kind of year. I would definitely use him. I think he's a win candidate. Hopefully, you'll get a decent price on him, uh, but I think he's one you have to use for sure. Uh, Skinner did, had a nice San Felipe, and we really liked him in that race, given that professional win he had in his maiden. You know, debuting with a career high buyer is uh, is something you always want to see. Uh, the only question we had is he's kind of a runs from behind, and that wasn't necessarily conducive to a winning score in the San Felipe. He had a nice trip. Uh, he did have his, his momentum interrupted a little bit by Fort Bragg and um, Hijazi when he swung out, but he still kept on and got a nice third. But here's the one thing that I saw when I dove deeper into that race. His class level stayed the same as it did when he broke his maiden. In other words, that's he ran to the same class level in both races. Now, generally what you want to see is a progression you want to see them their class level increasing, uh, regardless of what the field is every single race. And he so, um, and you can kind of, you it's demonstrated by the fact that he got a ninety four buyer and he got a ninety five in the maiden. So uh, I think this one is still a nice horse, but I'm thinking he's more of a a better bet to have him underneath in the tickets and not necessarily a win candidate. Uh, I don't know that you. I think he might be a bit of an underlay given his last performance. Uh, but you got a couple of things. If you like him, you got a couple of things to look forward to. Uh, John Shereffs is really good at third off the layoff. He's at 30%. He's two for four, 50% with three-year-olds. So uh, it's definitely a good spot. And uh, could this one move forward? Yeah, it's possible. Um, I'm just, I got a little bit of doubt about that. And so I'm thinking this one is better suited for underneath, particularly if he runs late like he did last time. Uh, Mandarin Hero, your guess is as good as mine on this one. Uh, he's by Shanghai Bobby, who doesn't scream two turns, but he does have some stamina underneath with the with the dam. Um, and he's run at distances before, so uh, maybe he's going to get the mile and an eighth okay. But here's the problem. That last race I watched, he finished second, but it was kind of a non-factor second. Uh, he really, I, I don't know, he just sort of hung around and, and got up for second. He wasn't going to win the race. Um, and it, plus, if you look at that time, 154 is just glacial. Uh, if you consider the Arkansas and the Florida Derby were both running about 149 and 3, uh, that means that essentially this horse would have been 25 lengths behind the winners of, uh, of either of those races. You see a mile at 141, a mile at 142, seven furlongs at 128, six furlongs at 115. Those times are just not going to cut. Those are claiming times. So uh, I don't know what to make of this one. I mean, uh, I think if you like him, maybe put him underneath. I can't see him as a realistic win candidate. But if you get boxcar odds, why not put him under the ticket? Who knows? He might be able to clunk up for third or fourth. But that's the extent of my interest. Low expectations, we really liked in the Sunland Derby, and we were rewarded. He finished at 21 to 1, got second place, and uh, kept on, and, and, you know, rated right behind really hot fractions. And uh, he showed the kind of grit that I was expecting out of this one. He's a, definitely a, a tough horse. 
Uh, but a 76 buyer so is just not going to cut it in a derby prep, a real one. And uh, I don't think we can consider this one to be anything more than maybe a pace presence. I think he's a field filler, if nothing else. Um, I, I like him as a horse because he's tough, but I think he's uh, I think he's more of the ungraded stakes variety at best. So he does not make my tickets. So let's take a look at our top five and see what that looks like. Our top five for the Santa Anita Derby are number five. I don't get it. Um, why not? I mean, just to try to get some odds. We know who the big four are in this race, but uh, I think you might get this one at a price. And uh, he is on the upswing, so uh, he might be able to hang around uh, and, and get into the money. And number four is Skinner. Uh, I think the late running style works against him a little bit here. Uh, I think he'll have to be more formally placed if he wants to have a shot at winning. But I just have a little bit of a doubt that maybe he's plateaued and um, he's still a nice horse, but I'm not sure we can call him a win candidate underneath, I think, is more likely. Number three is National Treasure. Uh, the, the hasty training is a, is a little bit of a concern, but I think this one uh, has the talent to overcome it, much like this arm did in the Louisiana Derby. So I think this is one you have to use, and he's a potential win candidate. Number two is Go Rocket Ride. He's shown an awful lot of precocity. He's got the right trainer to uh, to steward him forward. And I think he demonstrated in the last race that he's got a lot of talent. And he's an absolute win candidate. Number one is Practical Move. He hasn't done anything wrong this year. He had a great debut with the San Felipe. Got a 100 buyer. Uh, he's a natural win candidate and a logical favorite. Uh, I do have a couple of uh, lingering questions about, his, uh, about the distance. But uh, I think there's no reason to expect that uh, he won't fire with a, with a good race in this one and is a potential, uh, can potentially win it for sure. The San Diego Derby is kind of coming up chalky. I think you'd agree. It seems to be the big four and everybody else. So I don't know how good a betting race it's going to be. Uh, I think the real question mark is National Treasure. And if he can come back from the interruption in this training, and uh, I'm kind of sentimentally rooting for him because I've always liked that horse. And uh, I'm going to try to get him home on my, some of my tickets. But you can't deny practical move and go rocket ride are probably the top two in this race for sure. Uh, we will have a video for the Wood Memorial uh, later on, as well as a coast to coast pick five uh, analysis. And that was on request, and uh, which I very much appreciate. And uh, I'll be happy to put that out for you. That'll be out later this week. We also, as part of our Keelan card series, will have a All Stakes Pick 5 for Saturday's card, and that should be coming later as well. Uh, if you do like what you see here, please like and subscribe, and uh, we really do appreciate it, and I love the way this community is growing, and I hope our analysis is helping you to make a couple of bucks. And uh, I'll be talking to you soon, so until then, be well.